thanks for the support as a channel member, Austin Hartman. Oh, every year, the French Cup doesn't fail to disappoint. Last year, we got League One opposition. This year, we get the team top of the division above us. I love getting to find out how successful we're likely to be if we get promoted. Hello and welcome to part 18 of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a massive game in the French Cup. We are, I mean, it's top of the table versus top of the table. We're top of the third tier. Troy's, Troy, Troy, this lot, Estac, we'll call them. They'll love that. Um, they're top of the second tier. And it's going to be very interesting to see how we compare against them. And then in the second part of the episode, we'll have a league game against one of this lot. Probably these, because they're the one immediately after. Depend depends how things go against... I'm th I'm thinking maybe a replay in the cup, because I'd like to think we stand a good chance. This is what the league table looks like. This is what our current form looks like. So we have had a couple of slightly iffy spells, but now we've got into that routine of cup game, league game, cup game, league game again that served us so well in previous years. It really does help as a motivator for the league games and gets a nice little run of form going. So we're going into this with a head of steam. But to be fair, so are our opponents. They are doing just as well in the division above as we're doing down at this level. In fact, they've played... Wait, how have they played 20 games already? And we've only played 14. But either way, it's the battle of the T teams. That's probably how it's being dubbed by the media. And they, they probably... And this is the team. This is the team. This is the team that we're going to be sending out there for that game. We've got Mandrea in goal, a back row of Mustache, Deleste, Boyd, and Abdullah. By the way, on the topic of Stephen Boyd, he's had an explosion of ability um, in recent weeks. Now considered the best player at the club by a long way. Um, he's made it into the Media Dream 11 as well. We've now got a second player in that Media Dream 11. In fact, we, we haven't. We did have. Tutu's not in the Dream 11 anymore. We did briefly have two players in the Dream 11. We're now down to just one, but it's now Stephen Boyd, who is now the third best player in the entire division. Only Grenoble have got better players than Stephen Boyd. So he has uh, he has exploded. And also, of course, now he's the best player at the club, uh, which is confirmed there. Um, he no longer wants to discuss any kind of contract stuff because he wants to leave. So it's kind of good and bad. I guess the really good part is that he's now actually got some half-decent transfer value as well, so we might even get a decent fee for him. I just hope he doesn't go in January. Um, in midfield, it's saying Traore, Vaquero and Galdan, Gotan and Babai behind Hare up front because Tutu is injured. This is probably why he's dropped out of the Dream Eleven. He's got a hernia and is out for the next five to six weeks. Tanard also injured, although Moustache really has replaced him in the team these days anyway. Um, and Peron, not fully fit, but again... Not really a regular starter, although he's played a lot more football this year than we ever expected him to play because of the lack of depth and all the injuries that we've had in central midfield. So let's get this team submitted and see how we get on against Troy, a team from the division above. They start things off with a corner and we don't really defend it properly, but luckily the header goes over from them. And I'm, I'm keen to see how we get on because... At the moment, we are looking good for another promotion. Obviously, this is one of the better teams in the division above, but it's nice to see how we how we match up against them. I mean, we've started reasonably brightly. Four shots. Um, four shots already. That's how you judge how well a team is playing in a football match. How many shots off target have they had? Gotan loses out on the ball there, but Deleste is there to dominantly head the ball back forward to Gotan. And by the way, as you can see, wearing a bright yellow captain arm, captain's armband today, our 18-year-old left winger, because of his leadership skills. He's my, He might be my favourite player in this team. I really like Kingsley Gotan, even though there's no logical reason to. Talent-wise, he's not up there with the rest of these youngsters. I just, I just like the cut of his jib, and he never lets us down either. And there he is. Um, not not letting us down. I mean, he did great defensive work to help Mustache out there. That's what that's what we're going to call that. Um, although Troy on the attack again, and oh, they're in, and luckily fire wide. Is that Ek Ugbo off of Chelsea many years ago? Who I've had on many many a long save here on YouTube over the years. So 
that's the kind of level that we're up against now. He is always, or certainly the last time I used him, a very adequate championship player in England. And I don't think we've got anyone in our team who you would describe in that manner. So I suspect we are likely to lose today if that's the kind of quality of player there. But yeah, it is. It's EK, EK Ugbo. I've actually recognised a player playing for the opposition. I think that might be the first time in this entire series that that's happened. And as you can see, they are starting to assert themselves on the game a little bit now. But we've done very well. And this is often the story in these cup games against the bigger opponents. We saw it last year when we played Clermont, who were in uh, the top flight. Um, we actually keep these games reasonably tight. We do quite well in them, um, even if we do end up losing them. And at the moment, we are not embarrassing ourselves, although that defending was a little bit embarrassing. And they've got a man in space here on this left-hand side, but Mandrea is there to make an excellent save. And it goes behind for another corner, remains nil-nil, 55 minutes on the clock. It looks like there's a lot of people turning. I'll just notice how many people are behind that goal. This might be the fullest we've seen the ground since the start of the save. Babai charging down the left, waiting for someone to come up and support him. He's done well to hold on to the ball and let everyone get back into their shape. But then Traore sloppily gives the ball away and sets up a counter-attack for Troy again. Ball forward, and I guess Mandrea dealt with it because the highlight just ended, even though it was a, a fairly threatening-looking attack. But we'll take it. We'll always take a highlight ending in that kind of situation. Right, Gotan is shattered. He's probably not the only one. It's the 68th minute. It's substitution o'clock. We've got Odiba who can come on for him. That's a fairly easy change to make. And then we just need to freshen up the rest of this defence. So Abdallah, I think Boyd is going to have to go out to right back. And David Carter can come on and play in there. Moustache can come. Oh, we don't have Tanard. We talked about that before the episode as well. We don't really have it. So Moustache is going to have to stay on. And then... In central midfield, we struggle because we we just don't have any strength in depth there. Um, normally, we'd move Gotan in there, but he's already had to go off, so we're probably going to have to leave Vaquero on as well. Um, Her's having a poor game. So, oh, in fact, you know what? We're going to take off Babai and Her and just try a different front three. Do our usual five substitutions. Try something a little bit different and hope making all these changes just freshens things up to the point where we can sneak a winner. What it probably has done is weakened the team to the point where it allows them to go and grab a winner. But let's try and put the positive spin on it. It's a lovely opportunity for Salah Buzrara, who's not played a lot of football in about the last year or so, but now getting an opportunity to test himself against a good team from the second tier, likely to be back in the top tier again next season based on how they're playing. And Boyd, we give him all the credit there for the defending and it remains nil-nil, 10 minutes to go. But it is Troy on the attack again. It feels like if a goal is coming, it's going to come for them. We've not really created anything in the entire match. And that's some lovely football from them. And it's this time, I think, hitting the frame of the goal. It was given us offside as well. But they are knocking on the door now. Look at those match stats. We are defending valiantly. But it does feel like a breakthrough is coming. And it's not a replay. It's straight to penalties. Well, that's a little bit of a shame. I thought we were going to get a replay if we managed to hold them. Um, alas, not. But it is an opportunity for us to, to sneak past them on penalties, really. It's it's a lottery now. Anyone can win this. Traore scores our first penalty. Is this the first penalty shootout we've shown in a video in this series? I'm not sure that it is. Uh, but Mandrea with a hero-making opportunity. And there we go. His first, we'll call it his first save, of the shootout. He is going to make himself a hero today. Talking of heroes, Salah Buzrara has very much been a hero of the save. Not today, though. Uh, I mean, that just sums up how his tour career has been going in the last 18 months or so. And now we need Mandrea to pull off some more heroics for us. And he is not able to. 1-1 one, one after two penalties each. And it's Deleste, the youngster who signed for us from Paris Saint-Germain this summer. Should have been groomed for the big occasion. And apparently hasn't been. So we got a question there, PSG. You've set up a little bit there, I think. Uh, Troy now with the opportunity to go 2-1 up, three penalties in. Mandrea, please do us a favour. He doesn't. It is 2-1 to Troy. And I think that's probably that. It's gone now. Uh, Vaquero, one of our youngsters now. Let's see how our youngsters compare against the Paris, Paris Saint-Germain youngsters. Very similar. It's a very similar... I mean, we're a bunch of bottle jobs. 
it seems. Missed three penalties in a row now. And Mandrea, despite giving us that early, early edge where we, we dreamed for a moment, now has to make a save to keep us in this shootout. And even then, it all seems a little bit unlikely from here. He does make the save, though. Mandrea's doing his bit, even if the rest of the team have decided not to bother. Get him taking the fifth penalty. We might as well. He's the only one who's turned up for this shootout. It's going to be Perron, the long-serving central midfielder. He was here from the start. He's in his 30s now. Oodles of experience. Surely he's not going to miss, is he? He isn't. The shootout is still alive. It's gone down to the fifth kick. We are going to need yet another piece of heroic goalkeeping from Mandrea. If we pull this off here, all of a sudden the momentum swings massively back towards us because Troy were there. They were through. And now we've taken it down to the final kick. And unfortunately, they do score it. But we have pushed a team 20 places above us in the league about as far as you can push them. The final kick of a penalty shootout is all that separates the two of us. Mandrea has done excellently there. I think that justifies him replacing Goda for anyone who was questioning that. And uh, now we need to make ourselves feel better in the league. You know the drill. We're losing the cup. We've got to make ourselves feel better in the league. At least we can just focus on the league now for the rest of the season. When do they add a second cup in? We had a second cup in the first season. Not, not a sniff of a second cup since. It's nice having a cup to win. And we're obviously not in a position to win that. That's a nice attendance, though. Five and a half thousand people. That must be our highest attendance of the series so far. Although it doesn't, we haven't had the record come through. So I guess maybe it wasn't. I don't know what would have been a higher attendance than that. But yeah, we're definitely not getting any indicator. I mean, have we had a higher attendance this season? Five, three, mm, I guess we've got close. We must have done. I mean, we probably don't need to go through looking. You know what? Rather than looking through for it individually, we could just go to the records and say, what was our highest attendance? Oh, it's because it's taking ones from before the save started. That's why this season. It's not even our highest this season. We played Le Mans. Le Mans. 5710. Where was that one? 57. I don't know why. Why am I doing this? What is happening right now? I don't, we haven't played them. Are they even in our league? I don't know. I give up. Let's go play a football match. Well, no change to the first team for the, uh, or the starting 11 for the, for the, the big game against Vendy Herbiers for my fate, my, probably my most favoritist named team in the entirety of France. One big problem, though, David Carter has joined Tutu on the long-term injured list. Three to four months with a broken foot, which he was just starting to get himself into the team, as you can see, um, compared to last year when he only started three games. Already started nine games this season, and we've seen him score a couple of those beautiful free kicks as well, and he's now going to miss the bulk of the most important bit of the season, which is a little bit of a shame, especially when we've already got 2-2 unavailable. And we are looking ahead at January, thinking, really, this can't come quickly enough because we are starting to have a few key players drop out. We do have a, a midfielder coming in on loan from Monaco in January. So that's one extra body through the door. And I, I really think we probably need to do a little bit more business as well because we are just a little bit light. And if we're going to be having this title push, I think we do need a couple of extra players. There was a perfect example of why I like Gotan so much, by the way. Um, just getting into a decent position, nodding it down for her, and her really should be finishing off. And that is, after the heroics of the last game from Mandrea, that's some terrible positioning from him for that set piece. And we very nearly got caught out by a team who are down in the relegation zone. They've only got 12 points for the season, second, uh, third from bottom. And uh, that was a little bit of an alarming... A, an alarming moment and just as we have that um league game cup game league game cup game th thing that we were talking about before that sort of spurs us on and keeps us in good form and gets a run of games under our belts often we find as soon as we get knocked out of the cup we do struggle a little bit for a game or two until we get back into winning ways i hope we're not going to see that today her missing another opportunity though and as we're approaching half-time against a team we should be beating comfortably, it's still nil-nil. And there's really nothing between the two teams. 
10 shots between us, not one of them on target. It seems that we've both decided that we don't really fancy scoring today because that, it, that I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen an entire half of football where there's not a single shot on target. Certainly not in Football Manager. As a Peter fan, I've seen it in real life a few times over the years. But in an actual football match, I mean, we've done better in this second half, but still, don't look like making the breakthrough. There's not much in the way of highlights here, is there? Let's um, let's just have a little look down at what we, I mean, Gotan shattered, so that's an easy change to make. Um, and what have we got on the bench to make any other difference? And not really. I mean, it, there's little there's little there. Ben Vindo, maybe, but he's he's not as good as Babai or her. Buzrava is not as good as her. I mean, I think we just do that one change for now. Gotan's tired, but everyone else, it weakens the team so significantly to make the changes. I don't mind doing it when we're two or three nil up. We'll do, we'll do five changes here, no problem. Freshen everyone up, give everybody game time. But when we're still trying to get the breakthrough, I think we need to keep our best players on the pitch. We really are missing 2-2. Two -two. And, of course, missing that potential match-winning free kick from Carter. He's not there to, if we win a free kick in these last 20 minutes, he's not there to stick it in the top corner. I mean, I need to check which foot he's broken. He's a left footer. Um, if he's if it's his right foot he's broken, I'd be tempted to keep him on the bench just to come on and take the free kicks if need be. And that is not ideal. We're going to lose against the team in the relegation zone. Um, we have not looked with it at all today. Right, we need to change something. Um, I think what we're going to do is take off the Quero and bring on Buzrara, and we are going to go to two up top. We've got to try something a little bit different. Because what we're doing just isn't working. We're going to go attacking. Um, and Mustache is tired, so he can come off. I think we bring on Ben Vindo as well. just to. And you know what? We'll bring on Perron as well. Per, yeah, Perron. Um, get him in there doing that. And just try something different, because what we've been doing has not been working. We're demanding more as well. This is this is an embarrassment if we lose against this lot. We're not supposed to lose games like this. Look how tight it is at the top of that table. We're sitting pretty at the top of the league at the moment, but a, one match day of results not going our way, and all of a sudden we're down in fifth place. That's not part of the script. That was supposed to be a big win to make us feel better after the cup shenanigans. We've just had an entire match, an entire episode, where we've not scored a goal. I'm not very happy. Oh, if you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.